Uh, it's exciting for me this morning because no other person than <laughs> Stephanie Benson herself is right here on the set with us. Now listen, if you ever if you follow her on social media, you see the shenanigans she gets up to and everything else. We're gonna delve into the, the stories. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. <laughs> yeah. Hi Mama. It's, it's Hi my sweet gorgeous girl. <laughs> You look gorgeous. I wish I'd known Thank I would dress like this. Yeah, I, I like she would have knocked it out of oh, the park. Oh, I know. I am so angry that I'm dressed here like Janet Jackson. <laughs> <laughs> What's all this? Anyway, how we're, are you guys? Well, oh, we're wow. good. We're how, good. What do you have underneath that? How, how are you? What do I have underneath hmm. it? Yeah. It's Nothing. a very good question. Nothing. I know. Nothing. It's are like you, wearing I, a kilt. You, you know? Are you curious? He's just, he's, I'm extremely curious. He's just yeah. packing, <laughs> I'm always curious. He's fucking good. I know. He's fucking right. Okay. I'll behave. This is too early. <clears throat> Listen, we like Stephanie not behaved. Yeah. Oh. At least I like Stephanie not behaved. Yeah, I, I, watch well, all, I, I watch the way you harass your husband. Oh, I, I honestly, John deserves it. Oh, really? <laughs> no, John he sounds like he's it. on the end of a raw deal. No, I mean, you people, honestly, I don't get it. We went through <laughs> slave trade. Yeah. Oh, oh and I'm married to a white man. Yeah. And you want me so to treat him well. Back. <laughs> <laughs> it's payback. It's time for John to take the, the, the you know. This is reparations. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> please, whole, let me read your slave trade yeah. through me. I yeah. mean, let me teach him some lessons, Kakra. Because okay. sometimes I have to handcuff him. Oh, oh, hello. Well, yeah. Oh, oh Lord. You know, yeah, it's just the way it is. I'm sorry, <laughs> guys. Got some pictures of Stephanie and John on the screen family as well I mean the two of you okay. are listen let's go couple. back let's go back yeah. a little before John bit. before and, John and, your five kids. and before all the beautiful yeah. family that you've set up there where where did you grow up well I grew up here I was born where's here wait oh in Accra okay and, and yes although I'm from Kumasi okay but I was born in Accra my father was a um, pharmacist he owned um, arts and drug manufacturing. You know, you guys know APC. APC, yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Okay. Yes. Oh, that's your so father's company. That's my father's company. Okay. He started it just before we got independence. Okay. Wow. Um, two years before. So, yes. And he was the very first minister as well. So, hmm. yes. I, was, I sort of grew up in a very, you know, um, educated okay. en environment. Um, environment. Yeah. Wait, hang on. What's so, your father's name? Oh, Samuel Benson Ajapon. There you okay. go. Yeah, my father Ajipong. Samuel Benson. So he was Ajipong. one of Nkrumah's ministers. Yes, yes. The very first, um, you know, minister of, I think, farm, what was it? Health? Um, health. health, yes. Health. Yeah. Look at me. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and then my mother's side, my mother was born of, into royalty in okay. the Asante royalty. Okay. And um, they made her um, queen mother of the Hin Makokobing. Okay. So, um, I mean, my household was just amazing. But then, when I say this, you instantly think, oh, maybe she was very strictly brought up. Everything was like, you know. Yeah. But it wasn't like case at all. Okay. My father taught me how to play the piano. I, I mean, I used to have fun with my father. We used to wait till he's, uh, so, let me put this one. My father was 84 when he died. Okay. So he was, he was old. You know, but my mother was only 19 when she had me. Wow. Um, so what was the age gap between your father and your mother? Too much. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's, too much. that's like maybe my age now. I mean, it must have been at least 50 years, I okay. think. Wow. But that was good. You know, it was cool. It was, nowadays, that's what happens, isn't yeah, it? I, I mean, it's been happening for young seniors. Mm. It wasn't an arranged marriage. They, you know, they fell in love. Okay. And... Um, and, and the product is five of us, five girls. And Akos is one of them. I mean, Akos, yeah, I think Akos. when okay, I got so Akos, who, okay, so who's the good first? genes had finished. Who's first? <laughs> what? You wait, who's first? My older sister, Belinda. Belinda? And she's only 16 months older than I am. Okay. And then there's Akos. Okay. And then there's um, Patricia. Okay. Yeah. And then there's a fifth um, one that my, my mom had with... Um, you know, after my father died. After your father died. Yeah. Okay. okay. So five of you. Okay. Five. Five. So, so it's Belinda's kids that I went to school with, right? I went to I went to Tia's oh, with Belinda's because okay. they were they were my my okay. Yes, she's okay. a child. Yeah. <laughs> so, you see, she just went. <laughs> I could have had her, like, I've had five of her. Yeah, yeah. I know, right? That's why I call her mama. Like, uh -huh. I know my place. <laughs> what was, 
what was what was home like with five you know girls growing up girls. you know was it was like? it was actually really really fun because my mother would play with us a lot i mean we used to get up to so much and um, my mother liked us entertaining people it's you know i played the piano okay. i didn't actually sing that much occasionally mm. i would but you know singing was not a career at that mm. time you know but if you could sing great and my mother bought me a piano my father obviously had a piano so when people would come to the house my mother would say yeah and I know I have to go and entertain somebody. <laughs> but it was only me at the time. I was the only one who was getting pulled to go and do the dancing, singing, playing, you know. It wasn't Akus. Mm. So I think Akus realized I was getting all the attention. <laughs> so she decided to dance. You see, you're know? always taking dicks at Akus. <laughs> oh, yes. You know the reason why? Let me tell you why I take dicks at Akus. It's because any chance she gets to me, she talks about me and my dressing. <laughs> they say, oh, in the media, listen, I've got plenty, plenty things on you. So if you're going to talk about my dressing, you'll see. <laughs> and so that's, you know, but we, we're never mad with each other. And, I mean, and she's quarrel. talking about the Akosia Japan, yes. yes. uh, the, you know, legendary um, Ghanaian musician that we all know yes. and love. Yes. Yeah, the good girl you all see. <laughs> The one who comes on TV and acts like she's an angel, that one. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. so, so it's interesting, I, I, your, your father was Samuel Benson in Japan, yeah. and you took the Benson, and mm -hmm. she and took she Japan. Japan. Interesting. Yeah. Really yeah, interesting. I know, it, it's yeah. The, the dynamics. Now people understand, this is the first time actually people understand yeah. where the Benson, where the came, Benson from. came from. Okay. Yes, yeah. 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 So it's actually your father's name. It's my father's name. But what's your husband's name? Hey, my husband said name there. You see, if I tell you, actually, no, it's a good thing I tell you because then you wouldn't mind if I give him hell. His name is Bugs. 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 I'm, I know. Uh, wait, wait, Johnny Bugs. It's Bugs. Jonathan Bugs. B U G S. Oh, wow. Bugs as an insect. As, as an insect, took at him. <laughs> B U G S. I fell in love with him before I actually knew his. Well, I knew his surname, but he, he didn't. You know, when you're in love, you forget yeah, surname. Yeah, it's like. And then when I was saying, yeah, yes, like Mrs. Angelie Bugs, I'm thinking, what the? Equia <laughs> <laughs> Bugs. So I met, I, a queer Bugs. <laughs> Bugs but I am a bug now, so I'm a, a, yeah, you know, a real bug. Him well. I'm like, yeah, I'm bugging him. If you give me the surname Bugs, then your life is going to be a buggy uh, affair. But, <laughs> so, so let's go back home, growing up with the five girls. What, yeah. what are some of the things that you used to do that you remember? I know it could be naughty things, but just the things that bring back the memories growing up in, in that household. Um, honestly, the stories are plenty. It's like I used to... My, I was annoying. I know I'm annoying. I know you guys have to put up with me. And some of you really hate me, I know. But I used to irritate my kids to hell. I don't know what. It's just when I get this, I have this energy that, <laughs> that I can't. It's, it's when it comes into my head, I have mm. to act it. Okay. Do you know how, what, what I mean? It's like, yeah. it's not. Like it occurs to you, you can't you keep it. You just it. Have I can't do keep it. I have to act it. I'm not one to hold it in. Wow. Um, so. It, it was, you know, so my sister, if she'd annoy, if I felt like irritating her, I would bug her, pull her hair, <laughs> nudge, nudge, nudge. And then one day, the girl got so fed up, the, the maid, well, the house um, help was ironing. She picked up the iron and put it on my hand there. Yeah, I had to wow, have the scratches today. Which sister was this? That's the older one. Wow. She's a quiet but deadly, that one. <laughs> yes, yeah, she's the type who will kill you in your sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Linda, yes. Okay, now you're I'm talking out about you. <laughs> yes, I will out all of them today. And then, of course, was my father called a schema. Yes. When my father's asleep, we'll tell Akos, Akos, Akos is the only one who's going to steal money. So my, <laughs> my father used to keep his money in his pocket when he fell asleep. At one point, he used to sleep like this. Because I said nobody will take their money. <laughs> <laughs> and Akos was sneaking. So Akos go, go back, go back. And then go, because we wanted sweets. We were like prisoners in our house. My father never allowed us to associate with people. Mm. We weren't allowed to hang out. You know, we lived in Tessano. It's like there are five of you entertain yourself. Yes. So you it's like it's else. No. Yeah. So we weren't allowed yeah. to go. We only went to Tessano Sports Club and then back home. Tessano Sports Club. So we were craving company. And I was always craving company. But I had 14 brothers, or oh, 16 brothers and sisters. 
Oh. So, well, oh. no, oh. it's 14, yeah. Because my father so, had lots of um, children. Uh, but they're all a lot older, so we used to play with their kids. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Oh. Yeah, my... my your um, your ne nieces and nephews yes. became your... Your siblings. My, my siblings. <laughs> and my oldest sister was... Um, um, what's her name? Sorry. She was married to Darucha. Okay. Oh. Yeah, the okay. lawyer. And she was a lawyer yeah. herself. Okay. Um, and... Yeah, we, we have all lawyers, and then you have a cousin me, who are like <laughs> <laughs> singers, yeah, like the, 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 the two, yes, the two annoying lots. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, but then again, I finished school though. I mean, obviously, I studied business, um, and I was a consultant for um, Coots. Yeah. And I worked in marketing and advertising and De Beers, in between singing and children. Mm. You know, when my husband was having cold feet. And like, please, the singing is too much. And then I'll go and do some sensible job. <laughs> so how did you get into singing? Well, singing was just by chance. Because I you studied business. Yes. And, and I know, or correct me if I'm wrong, you had started music even before you went on to get yes. a degree. Yes. So how did music start for you? Well, music started when my father died at 14. Uh, and I was 14 years old, I mean. And I was sent to England with my sister, my older sister. And my uncle took over. Um, the head of the family mm. and um, I think we lived with him for like two months and he decided he wanted to keep me and growing up it was that was hard actually because I was with my sisters all the way through growing up we had a great life I mean the UK my uncle's very wealthy um, but the household was not the same mm. it, it was not loving it wasn't like hugs and the kisses that I used to get it wasn't the laughter there was nothing of that kind. Wow. I love you, Uncle, but yes, the house was like <laughs> prison. <laughs> but you know, and um, but I know he loved me. Mm. You know, except other people in the house didn't. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but it's just me. I had, you know, um, it, I used to think it was me. I used to think it's because of the way I am. I used to think it was because I'm a, a bit. You know, I speak my mind and whatnot. Not everybody can cope with it. I don't do it in a nasty way. Mm. But I think, I don't know, my uncle got me. So he kept me and sent Belinda back. Mm -hmm. So I thought maybe my mother didn't want to me anymore. Oh. <laughs> Feel sorry for me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, you know, really, that was hard mm -hmm. because um, then I was ripped away from my sisters and, and there I was. My uncle was trying to change me a little bit to be a little bit more lady -like. royal yeah. and ladylike. And um, one day I met a friend in school while I was, um, you know, studying and she said she'd got a job in Stringfellas, which is one of our biggest nightclubs in the, in the UK. I mean, all the stars went there, Mel Gibson, you know, big, big, big stars. Okay. And she said to come. And I'm thinking, how the hell am I going to hide, run away from home to go to <laughs> Stringfellas? You know, and I was 17 and I managed it and I went. And when I got there, there was a, a pianist at the piano bar playing. And at that time, I used to play piano. Like, you know, I was really good. I don't play so much anymore. It's so lazy. <laughs> and um, she, you know, um, I remember I was dressed like, like, like a nun, you know, because at that time, you know, my clothes were a bit. So I walked, there was, I saw a table <laughs> with Peter Stringfellas and Mel Gibson and some other big oh, stars wow. and wow. Pete Waterman wow. sitting on one table. So this is basically where the stars came to hang out when they were in the yes. UK. All the stars, when mm. they came to UK, Stringfellas is where they went to. Mm. And you remember Peter, Peter Stringfellas? Yes. Long white Absolutely. hair. I have a video on my Instagram, actually. I wish I was going to talk. I would have sent it to you. And he was, um, this guy, so, yeah, this guy was playing. So I'm thinking, it would be lovely to come and get a chance to come and play here, you know? <laughs> so I walked up to the table with all the gutso that I have. And I said, do you mind? This is to P um, Peter Stringfellas. <laughs> If I go and play the piano with all these stars there, he looked at me like this African girl standing there with <laughs> long hair. It was my own natural, like, you know. And then I went up, up to him and he said, go ahead. So wow. he signaled to somebody and then I went to the piano wow. and started playing and that was it. So he signed and, well, he got me working there three nights, well, it was one night a week and then it got to three nights a week. And then I think on the second month or so, Pete Waterman, who used to come there, he was stocking yes. Waterman. Peter. He big, came up to big me. Big Pete Waterman. Yes, mm. with one of my my singing. Well, it wasn't a singing tutor, but one of my best friends was a singer. His name was um, T Green, and he said he wanted to sign me. And I was that was the beginning of my recording career. 
as wow. a you know and girl. people are, I mean for the sake of nostalgia you know the three degrees uh, the girls sing or who sang when will I see you mm. again mm. Yeah. He, he when will we all it together yeah I love that okay, one. Let me try again. I only know this <laughs> when will I see you Again. When will we all be together? That's all I know. So, <laughs> Piotr is associated with them, and he's the one who introduced them to the UK okay. audience. Okay. So, this is a big deal. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> yes, it was, it was, I mean, he had, um, and Rick Ashley, what's her name, Kylie Minogue, yeah. and all of them, all the big pop stars came from Stock Aiden wow. Waterman. Um, princess, I was called the princess. There was, I mean, I was so lucky, but you know, I was young, and I, the recording industry is not something I really How knew much about. How old were you about. at this point? At this point, um, by this time, I got a, um, a development deal, which means that they have to groom you for two years. Mm. Okay. And then you come out, that's how it was done properly mm, nowadays, nowadays anybody just, goes and yeah. then they sign you know <laughs> in the in at that time you have two years where they work with you yeah. and studio and then you're recording and they're getting to know you're getting to know who you are and how you want to communicate with people and this and was I in which year roughly this was like um um i was 18 19 okay. so when i first came out i was like 20 21 okay and then i got married one year after i came out mm. And then had a little bit of a, a break, which we was fine with. And then my biggest, my first hit was, um, I was 22. Oh, wow. Yeah, so this was in, now was the time. This was in the 70s then? Yeah. yeah. That, oh, no, no, 70s. No. Oh, why? Yeah, <laughs> it was in the 80s. It was 80s, yeah, but yeah, yeah, it was like, early yeah. 80s. Oh, all <laughs> my baby wife. I'm trying to like, age her by force. <laughs> She's my mama. Now. I know, I'm mama, but I'm not that old. But I am old. But yes, it was, um, it was um, late 80s, early 90s. Um, and that was sort of pretty good. At that time, we didn't have Instagram. Yeah, and, know, and yeah. you know, you don't even keep newspapers. And the thing is, you have to understand that for me, being famous w was not the motivation. Mm. I didn't really understand all of that. So it was really more about making music. Yeah. Um, so you don't, I mean, even now, when I sing for big stars, I don't take pictures. Mm. I don't really care. It's only when somebody takes it and then they send it. The yeah. music yeah. and the art lives in the moment. Yes, yeah. yes. I don't, I don't really revel in, you know, what I, where I was and what evidence I have to have because mm. I don't really care whether you believe me or not but that's the truth <laughs> you know mm. <laughs> it's the way yeah. it is I don't understand why anybody will have to make up meeting people or writing for people or being yeah. around people yeah. it doesn't make sense yeah. because people are people yeah. <laughs> so so then how did the music progress at some point you came back to Ghana and, well, I came back and to you were known as the queen of jazz yeah that know. was something that yeah. they gave me really because they were afraid that you know, I might be doing something else. They do. They want to separate me from the younger ones. Okay. So they thought, let's give her a grown-up title. That's all. Oh. Yes. But it's okay. I don't mind. I did do jazz, so it's it's okay. With Shockey and Waterman, I, the contract I signed was not favorable. Mm. It was an eighteen-year contract, which was. Oh my goodness. I know. You wow. know, at that time, huh. when they get you, you're stuck. Eighteen-year contract. Eighteen. Well, I mean, there are option eighteen months in between every single. And then um, up to five years before your first um, um, album. Mm. And then, so I was signed to a three album deal, so you can imagine, it just mm. went and went. And um, after I started, you know, doing my songs, the pop songs and dance songs, because I'd been in the studio for so long, I was actually hating it. Mm. See, this is why it's important for you to start music early and know who you are, because after two or three years, I knew that pop is not what I wanted to do. And I told him, he said, oh, we'll change, but not now. We'll change, but not now. And then one day I just looked and I said, I can't do this anymore. I'm going to clubs and all I'm doing is, gotta keep on, gotta keep on, gotta keep on. You're like okay. one-liners. Yeah. And, and he says, you're not ready. And I, I said, well, it doesn't matter, but at least I want to be doing, you know, something else. I just don't want to be famous. I yeah. want to get better. Yeah. Yeah. And he, um, he's, he said, well, this is what you're going to do. And I said, okay, well, here's me walking. So mm -hmm. I left. And when wow. I left, I couldn't take my name. 
I couldn't. I, I it was because that's how it was. Yeah. If you're signed, the yeah. name they give you is yes, this. Yes, this. yes, they own your so, brand. Yes, yeah, so they can erase you yeah. like that. You know, I remember one time I was looking on eBay and I saw my old song being auctioned somewhere. Like oh, now wow. is the time, the princess. I'm thinking, oh my god, wow. that was mine. But yes, um, and then after that, I took a little bit of a break, and then within like a few months, because I was a good performer. I was the very first artist ever on the London Fashion Week ever to sing. Mm -hmm. I remember walking on that stage with Linford Christie in Birmingham. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. I mean, the very first, before it even became... Linford Christie, this, is, this yes. must be, what, like yeah. early 90s? Yeah, yes, 1994, Okay, so and, yeah. just after the Olympics. Yes. And okay. you're right, at this point, it wasn't common to see recording artists or musicians mm -mm. performing it like in fashion was fashion music yes. was yeah. music yes. it, it wasn't interdisciplinary at no, all no at all i was the very first and it was amazing so wow. i remember walking in because they wanted me to do a catwalk and they said well could you sing a song and at that time i i brought out a song called friends which was like a jazz kind mm. of um soul jazz and friends it was amy stewart's um song that we we did okay. but it just did so well and um, you know, come on, my friends, and leave the culture to the wind. I know we used to keep this feeling side of side. You remember that song? Mm, it's getting stronger. I feel it burning in my eyes. Soul is keeping me, it's blowing deep inside. I have to think, of, come on and lay your tender lips down on my skin. Show me the sweet. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> that was a long, long but, time ago. Mama, you know what? We have one of your songs, Goodbye. Oh, Goodbye precise. was yes. one of the first ones yeah. I, re I uh, released here. Yeah, okay. and we, we, we want well, to play that. Yeah. Let's, let's listen to Goodbye. Let's, look at that. let's listen to Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Yeah. By the Stephanie Say Benson. hey, goodbye. I'm always yeah, writing words and I keep forgetting yeah, words. Goodbye. Yeah. So this was released in which year? This was released when I first came here. That was like 2009, maybe. Okay. Yeah, it's a long time ago. That was one of my first songs and I did Good Feeling. And it was like a double sided mm. A, B, and B side. Um, and I knew this was not the kind of music you guys were listening to. Yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah, I wanted yeah, to yeah. introduce something I knew would not be popular. Yeah. But but you know, I do what I want, mm. and I when I, you love music, you do it. You just yeah. don't do it just because other people want to hear it. Yeah. I could have come here and just done the kind of music that all the other female so, artists was doing. So I want, I want your thoughts on this thing because I mean, you seem to be very, you know, um, ride the wave. If I feel it, I'm doing my thing. Um, a lot of people are also very commercially biased, so mm -hmm. they want to do like they want to make money. You don't seem to care. No. You don't? 
No, I mean, it's, the thing is, music, yes, obviously, for some people, the money is necessary because without money, you can't promote yourself, mm. you can't sort of be out there. But um, I think to go into music predominantly, it has to be for the love of it. Mm, okay. um, you can't go in there thinking, you know, I want to be famous, I want to be a star, I want to be, you know, because you compromise yourself. Mm. I'm, I have I had so many chances, and, and trust me, if, I, if I'd gone that way, I probably would have been Beyonce by now, <laughs> yeah. by now but it's, it's not who I am. Okay. And, and I will not compromise myself for mm. anybody. Mm. I will not sell my soul to be famous. And that's also probably because I had the luxury of having, um, a, you know, wealthy family. Well, so that's what I, I was didn't about really to say. Mm. Someone might argue that's because you come from a background, yeah. you grew up in a background that didn't require you to, um, you know, hustle for money. Yeah, yeah. Yes, too. hustle yeah. for the love and for the passion, but not necessarily for money. Well, that's true. But also, listen, times are not always smooth. I don't care how much money you have. Even Bill Gates has had a time where he wants to make more money. I tell mm. you. You know, so I think for me, yes, at times when it hasn't always been perfect. I have five children, all went through private school. Yes, mm. private school in the UK. Yes, I know people say <laughs> in the UK it's easier because things are free. No, My, I've never used the NHS. My kids have never gone to state school. Okay. And it's only because I want the ability to do when I want, yeah. not to be held to ransom by NHS or anything like So my children all went to private school because I wanted to give them the best. Mm. So every penny I earned, I went towards paying for my kids' school fees. Mm. And my, my husband has a great office, has a great job. But I don't care how much of a great job you have. School for children <laughs> in the UK is expensive. You'd be, you, yeah. you, 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 Especially you private pay. school. I'm telling you. Yeah. Pay um, through your teeth, your stomach, yes. your back, your bum. <laughs> like everything. So there are times when, you know, options come as in, you know, somebody will make a proposition for you. Like, you know, I want to sign you to a 500,000, but come to my yacht. You know, let's have a, uh, um, you know, a, a meeting on my yacht. I, it's happened to me before where somebody says, listen, I want to invest in you. We have, you know, one, two million. We'll, we'll cover everything, blah, blah, blah. He even started, he gave my management a certain amount of me, and then he said, "Come and meet my family in my yard." I uh, went thinking, "Okay, family, it's yeah. all cool." Yeah. I got there. He had his three children there, and um, there I was, and him introducing me to his family, saying, "This is going to be my wife." And I'm looking at him, what? thinking, "When you came to me, yeah, I was married with three children at yeah. that time, yeah. and you want what?" So, oh no, I told him, "Say, can you drop me the next spot, please, and let me go home?" Most people would have said, "Yes, why not?" Yeah. And probably stayed there, and I, I mean, I wouldn't blame anybody. I don't judge. I really don't. Whatever suits you at that time, you can do. Mm. I'm not one to sit anywhere and say, you shouldn't have done, you shouldn't have done. It's what I would do. Um, and nothing would make me do something like that. So I will. And I've had so many. I mean, I if imagine. I tell you the, yeah. the stories, it's so many. Even now, <laughs> at my age, even now, married with five children, I'm going to be a grandmother. Yeah. You still have people, like, coming to, you know, um, wanting... You know, your your vagina, your soul. <laughs> <laughs> this old vagina. This so old let's let's wrap up. I mean, you. We're wrapping up. Uh, we are. Unfortunately, Look, we need really a whole year to no, talk no, no. to you. It's just yeah, I know my stories yeah. are plenty. We need a whole here. year yeah. to talk to you. Yeah. But let's talk. You're you're 54 this year. No, 55. 55 this year. This year. And you the have time a, goes quickly. It does. it does, isn't it? You have a grandbaby on Coming. the way. Woo. But you've also been married for what, 30? 30, 33 years. 33 years. Yes. And so even in your personal life, I mean, mm -hmm. we've spoken a lot about you as the career woman, as a musician, Stephanie. You've told us a lot about your highs and lows, how you handle certain difficult situations. But let's just very briefly tap into the personal you as a mother, as a wife. We are living in a time where it's difficult, it seems, for people to sustain a marriage. Um, and for people to have a career and raise five kids, how would you, you advise? I, I mean, not even because we may not even have enough time for no, it. No, we don't. Yeah. We don't yeah. I'll talk about but, but in terms of that, because I know you're a counselor as well. Okay. How would you advise young women, young Ghanaian women, young African women, um, especially in our Heritage Month and it's also International Women's mm. Month, to go about some of these things? See, I don't think there's any recipe for how to be a good mother or a good wife. I think you have to go with it. And first and foremost, I always say, try to be yourself. 
you know, we have our elders who always say, hey, you know, you say, you say, and the sister would do say, I, you know, and those restrictions make uh, people a bit worried about, you know, you know, just to be um, themselves they in a marriage. Be and, yeah. Uh, and yeah, and they're restricted and they feel a bit, I just go with it. Mm. See, and if I have something to say to my husband, I don't think, okay, if I say it, I'm diminishing him. Mm. It's just, you, so far as it comes from a good place, just say it. Men don't respond to screaming. No. You know, like, <laughs> no, 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 am I wrong, am I wrong? <laughs> it's really, because when I feel like I'm at that point where I need to speak my mind, I get to a place where I do like a zen, and then I have to have a monotone voice. Yeah. And then I say, okay, we do have to talk. There's a little bit of a problem. That's just, this is what I, um, I know this is what, I know emotion sometimes can run high, and, but you really need to find a way of mm. regulating that. Mm. I say yoga helps. Mm. If you don't want to do yoga because it's too hot, just do some stretches, B. Go outside and go, <laughs> and come back and then talk rationally. Because that is a really good way Rational of keeping your talk. husband mm. on side. You know, because when men feel diminished a little bit, th then they go out because they want to feel empowered. They want to feel sexy. Mm. I make my husband feel sexy every day, although the guy's old. But you know, <laughs> it's like, I just hope that he ain't that old. I, I, so, no, I know he's not that old, but yeah. I tease him. Yeah, you know, he calls me. I'd say, old man. Yeah. I'd say, everyone. Everyone. Uh -huh. yeah. I saw every single video. Yeah. yeah, old man. Everyone. I know. <laughs> because we, we, we just talk. We like to relate. Yeah. And, we, and we bring the kids into our world. You know, if I'm standing and I'm kissing my husband and my children are there, you know, we, they go, mom, take it to the bedroom. And I go and snog them as well. You know? <laughs> so I don't, I don't, you know, my, you see me with my boys. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. dancing, and dancing he's grabbing me. Yeah. And, you know, it's just natural. Yeah. It feels natural. They, they don't have to pretend. It's mm. just part of what we do, you know? And uh, my daughter will, my son will come and tell me, Mom, I've got like a, a small boy here. Could you look at <laughs> it for me? And I look at his ass and everything. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> we love it. We're all good. They see me walking around the house naked all the time because I don't like clothes. I know you people have a problem with that. Wow. But me, I don't like clothes on my body. Wow. Because it just feels a bit uh, restrictive. <laughs> I mean, I'm African. We came in, into the jungle with like grass <laughs> shirts. No matter how many sweat, I'm going to have to do it. In the hot oh, sun. Me, me. Ah. Yeah. I wish, honestly, I wish I could walk around like this all day. Me, you know, like this, I will walk free. around yeah. every day like this. Yeah. Feel free. Yeah. And feel and that's free. who I am. And nobody's going to change that. Move back, calm, in bamo. It's all right. <laughs> Stephanie. Anything on the horizon in terms of new projects, stuff, stuff that you're working on? Anything? Yes. Yeah. I have this one coming out called Asemaba. Asemaba. Uh. Yeah. Asemaba. <laughs> Asemaba, bitchy, Timmy. Asemaba, did I prove a symptom in Nuntia Crocon? Asemada, dummy. On a prove a symptom, Timmy. And let me give you the short bit. Uh huh. I be what said the nurse member can of fool. Many be a number my missus can walk on. Did you think I came to fool or what? My son, dear, open car, no one could school that. Otherwise, maybe book over to show you. So, for the same speaking in tongues, bringing out true facts, prepping you for the real stats. Listen, let me break it down to you. A summer bath. <laughs> no. okay. Look, I can't take this, it. This, this 55 year old milk chocolate. I don't even understand. I said you can eat me any day. Caramel. You relax. It's we, caramel. We, this is street side. If I milk chocolate, <coughs> come and eat. Yeah. <coughs> it's the like caramel to the brownie that you are. <laughs> Listen, thank you very much, Stephanie. Thank you. Thank it's you. been an it's absolute been fantastic. pleasure to be here. It's been fantastic. Always and great to have you, great Mama. I know, I know. You look beautiful. Yeah, and you. Mm. Uh, I'm looking on. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm, addicted. I'm addicted to anything that hangs. Oh, Lord. <coughs> at, at this, at this I juncture, tell you, let's take a short point. break. All right, we'll come back.